Feelings are automatic reflexes. They're our reaction to our situation and to our thoughts about our situation. It's important to acknowledge and respect your feelings as real and important. We want to be aware of our feelings, label them, and express them in a healthy way. It's important not to try to suppress or ignore strong emotions. Now, a feelings list can help us identify our emotions and label them, but there are five main levels of emotions, and they are anger, hurt or sadness, fear, and insecurity, guilt, and responsibility. And then the positive feelings such as happiness, feeling glad, feeling love. I'll put love and gladness. These are the five levels of emotions. And the thing is, we always have all five. In, in our important relationships, there are always going to be all five, to, depending on what happens. And sometimes we're only in touch with one of those feelings, but the rest are there too. So it's good to, be, to become aware of those and to be able to express them in a healthy way. Now, it's common for people to try to avoid or ignore negative or painful feelings. It's often difficult to accept our anger. And disappointment, guilt, fear, and sadness can feel overwhelming. But the release of emotion through words, and sometimes tears, helps heal our wounds. And only by bringing the feelings out into the open and understanding what they are can we see where they're coming from and possibly make some changes. Trying to ignore or push down difficult feelings such as grief, guilt or anger, or fear can just make things worse. Feelings don't go away when we push them down, and they will affect us psychologically and physically when they're not acknowledged. In relationships, the more you disguise your feelings, the greater the distance will grow between you. It strains your relationship. Trying to ignore your feelings or disguise them also takes up a lot of energy and can leave you feeling exhausted and stressed. So the first step to get rid of excessive negative feelings is to acknowledge your feelings and accept yourself for having them. So if a feeling is very intense, for example, it, it bothers you hours or days later, it's important to express that feeling or to process it in some way. Dr. Timothy Foster says, just a few minutes after an emotion is properly expressed, that emotion starts to dissipate. Almost as soon as an emotion comes out of our mouths, it starts to fade. This is healthy emotional functioning, admitting, talking about, noticing, expressing, and confessing what we feel. Repressing feelings, especially during the grief process, can lead to trouble with overeating, undereating, alcohol and other drug use, compulsive sexual behaviors, compulsive spending, not sleeping enough, sleeping too much, obsessing, controlling gestures and other compulsive behaviors. Repressed feelings don't go away. They linger and sometimes grow stronger. Sometimes we have, feel we have to stay one step ahead of the feelings. We have to stay busy. We have to do something. Author Melody Beattie says we don't dare get quiet and peaceful because then we might feel these emotions. And the feelings might squeak out anyway, causing us to do something we never intended to do. Scream at the kids, kick, at, kick the cat, or yell at a party. Blocked or withheld feelings can also lead to anxiety. Anxiety-prone people are often susceptible to taking on the feelings of people around them. The more you learn to be in touch with and comfortable with your own feelings, the less prone you'll be to catch those of others. In some cases, panic itself may be a signal that suppressed feelings are trying to emerge. Feelings can, can seem scary and overwhelming when they first begin to surface, but this scariness goes away when you allow yourself to accept and to feel your feelings. Our feelings are also indicators. When we're happy, comfortable, warm and content, 
we usually know all is well in our world for the present moment. When we feel uncomfortable with anger, fear, sadness, our feelings are telling us there is a problem. The problem may be inside of us, something we're doing or, or the way we're thinking, or it may be external, but something is wrong. Strong feelings are often a clue to unmet needs, like a light indicator on a car. If we don't want to look at that engine light when it's red, and we, and we cover it up, you know, when it's on, what will eventually happen? We need to pay attention to our feelings. They're, try, they're often trying to tell us something. When people begin to suppress their feelings in childhood, they tend to grow up being out of touch with their feelings and go through life experience a certain numbness or emptiness. One of the worst things we can do is walk away from a situation that produced a strong emotion, saying nothing to the person, but saying to ourselves, don't make trouble, just forget about it. Many of us spend a lot of our lives trying to take care of other people's feelings. Many of us have abandoned ourselves and have never taken responsibility for our feelings. Sometimes we need help unclogging our emotional logjam. Now feelings are not the be all and end all to living. Feelings must not di dictate or control our behaviors, but we can't ignore our feelings either. They won't be ignored. Our feelings are very important. They count, they matter. The emotional part of us is special. If we make feelings go away, if we push them away, we lose an important part of us and our lives. Feelings are the source of joy, as well as sadness, fear, and anger. The emotional part of us is the part that laughs, as well as cries. The emotional part of us is the center for giving and receiving love. The part of us that lets us feel close to people, says Melody Beatty. Now a feelings list can help you identify your emotions. We can feel many, many feelings the same time, often positive and negative. We can express our feelings by talking, journaling, and journaling can be very helpful. You can set time, set aside time daily to tune into your thoughts and feelings. You can also write unsent letters to people, write poetry, art and music also helps to externalize feelings. The key is to externalize our feelings by either talking or writing. And research shows that when we externalize our emotions, it calms our nervous system.